For Vivian, the part of Scarlet was all-consuming. Mentally and physically exhausted, she chain-smoked on set, pushing herself to give the performance of her life. Can't we ever forget that day at Twelve Oaks? Do you think I could ever forget it? Have you forgotten it? Can you honestly say you don't love me? No, I, I don't love you. It's a lie. Well, even if it is a lie, do you think I'd go off and leave Melanie and the baby? When I think of what was riding on that poor woman, I have, I have candids of her taken on set. She is exhausted. She is exhausted. She was in every scene almost. They worked her and changed the dialogue. She had to learn how to speak Southern. She had all those costume changes. She stood up to the strain and delivered a really great performance. I'm not cornered. And you'll never corner me, Red Butler. Oh, frighten me. You've lived in dirt so long, you can't understand anything else. And you're jealous of something you can't understand. Good night. It's not that easy, Scarlett. You turned me out while you chased Ashley Wilkes, while you dreamed of Ashley Wilkes. This is one night you're not turning me out. Vivian Lee always said she and Scarlett had nothing in common. And it's amazing that she saw herself that way because she and Scarlett were so alike, they were peas in the pod. Vivian's whole life was willful, regardless of consequences, just as Scarlett's was. Vivian would do anything to get what she wanted, just as Scarlett had to. I love you more than I've ever loved any woman. And I've waited longer for you than I've ever waited for any woman. Let me alone! Kiss me once. As soon as Gone with the Wind was released, its impact was dramatic and immediate. It was an enormous success. And Vivian knew stardom in a night. And the legend of Gone with the Wind reached out and enveloped her for the rest of her days. Gone with the Wind was next premiered in New York City, simultaneously in two theaters, to accommodate the greatest crowds in the entertainment history of Broadway. Crowds which had anticipated the gala occasion for months and months. I just knew that Gone with the Wind was going to have a history, a future and a history quite unlike any other film that had ever been made. And I wasn't wrong, was I? I would say without question it's the most popular film of all time. This is a film that cost $4 million, awful lot, in 38, 39. But on Variety's chart, Variety's current chart, it's made $400 million. So pound for pound, bangs for the bucks, that's more money than Star Wars, than Birth of a Nation, than anything. Because more people actually saw the film. <laughs> Need I say it is a privilege and an honor to announce this winner, Miss Vivian Lee in Gone. Ladies and gentlemen, please forgive me if my words are inadequate in thanking you for your very great kindness. If I were to mention all those who've shown me such wonderful generosity through Gone with the Wind. I should have to entertain you with an oration as long as Gone with the Wind itself. So, if I may, I should like to devote my thanks on this occasion to that composite figure of energy, courage, and very great kindness in whom all points of Gone with the Wind meet, Mr. David Selvin. Almost overnight, Vivian went from being virtually unknown to the biggest star Hollywood had ever produced. You can't imagine at that time 
There was no television. There was uh, a little theater in America, but the cinema was enormous. And she was Scarlett O'Hara, the biggest star of the biggest film ever made. And Larry at that time was not doing very well. And uh, he was very overshadowed, I think, by her immense stardom. When Olivier saw the film, he was amazed, he was excited, he was astounded, he was impressed, and he was furious because he realized then that she was very much better than he was on film. She understood the camera far better than Larry. Larry was always very stagey, rather like Gielgud. He treated the camera as something that photographed a play. Vivian understood something quite different about the camera, that you made love to it, that you went in close, that you understood the camera was your entire audience. Larry was always doing it for the room, for the studio, for the audience. Vivian was doing it for the lens. And she understood, like a lot of Americans, that the film world required a totally different technique. In the summer of 1940, both the couple's divorces came through and they were married. The Oliviers moved into the magnificent Notley Abbey in Buckinghamshire, their home for the next decade. Weekends at Notley were a magnet for many celebrities, with the Oliviers the king and queen of British high society. Well, Larry really should have been walking about all the time with a sword and a scabbard and a bow and arrows. And uh, so Notley was absolutely perfect for him. It was a castle and uh, it had battlements and it had everything, you know. I mean, it fitted the Olivia's perfectly. And it was a focus for the weekends. We had wonderful weekends at, at Notley Abbey. We had mar marvelous parties, mostly playing cards till dawn. They had this wonderful combination of being very glamorous, but very, very funny. They were hugely successful and a very, very romantic marriage. Uh, they were just wonderful. They were akin to the royalty within the theatre. They were the peak. They were A1 celebrities plus. And it's very easy to forget that now in this era of celebrity. They were very much, I think, um, the first of, if you like, the golden celebrity couple. They were the leaders of their profession in some ways. Um, the way that they behaved, the way that they entertained, as we know, at their several houses, um, and the way that the press followed them. At the height of her fame, Vivian spent much of 1944 filming the epic Caesar and Cleopatra in London. Who are you? Cleopatra. Queen of Egypt. Vivian Lee, the unforgettable star of Gone with the Wind, now comes to the screen in her outstanding role. 